You might have noticed that uh, we haven't used any random number numbers yet, and uh, there's a reason for that, and that is because the uh, the standard library doesn't have any uh, any random number functions. So if you uh, if you go into here and you type random uh, random state, you know there's uh, some key some words with random, but there's um there's no way to uh, get uh, random numbers, and uh, that's uh, that's the reason why. Um, uh, people go to uh, external crates to uh, to do that, and the uh, the most common one is called rand. And um, but first, the uh, you know the reason why uh, Rust doesn't um, have random in the standard library is that uh, the standard library is really small, uh, it's much smaller than in other languages. And um, part of the reason for that is because of uh, Cargo, which uh, you know Cargo makes it. Uh, Really easy to uh, to bring in um, external code, and uh, and also um, it, it's easier to to maintain a, a small standard library, and then you don't have to uh, uh, always you know work on uh, keeping it up to date. And you know sometimes standard libraries have uh, like functions that are kind of uh, not as uh, not as good as they uh, they they were when when they were first invented. But you have to keep on maintaining them because people are um, are using this the the code in the standard library, and so. Um, Anyway, that's it's sort of like a philosophical uh, difference. Um, so anyway, if you um, and here's how easy it is to uh, to bring in some uh, some code. So we're, we actually don't have to uh, do this uh, yet because uh, the the playground actually does this for us, and I'll show you that in a second. But uh, there is uh, when you have um, when you start a new um, a new cargo. Uh, project in, in Rust, you type cargo new and you give it a name, so my uh, project or something like that. Uh, actually, this one is called Rustbook, and this is uh, this is what it generates. It, it makes this uh, cargo dot toml file, and a, uh, a toml file is just a. Um, it looks like this. It's a simple um, uh, way of uh, keeping track of things um, using these uh, these attribute looking. Uh, Things here, and uh, it'll it'll generate this for you. Uh, your name, uh, the version number. It'll start it at zero point one, and then uh, dependencies. This is where you put in the uh, the crate you want to bring in, and it's uh, <clears throat> so if we're if we're bringing in rand, uh, we go to here, and uh, it always says you know add this to your cargo.toml, and this is uh, this is all you have to do. Then you do that, and then uh, when you uh, when you do a uh, cargo run, then it will um, it will find Rand, it will uh, download it, and then it will download all the things that Rand needs. If Rand has uh, you know other other crates that it uses, and then it'll compile, and it'll say like compiling, you know, a zero of uh, eight, and then one of eight, and and uh, hopefully it'll compile it fast and uh, put it together and run it. Uh, but uh, we actually don't need to do that for the playground, so we don't need to install Rust yet. And the reason why is, if you go here, you can see it already has it. So uh, the playground provides the top 100 most downloaded crates from crates.io. Crates.io is where you get uh, get crates. Um, also the crates from the Rust cookbook and all of their dependencies. So there's um, you know, chances are, um, if it's a uh, popular crate, uh, you don't even need to uh, to do anything. And actually, all you have to do is use a uh, use statement. And even this thing here, this uh, extern crate, uh, this um, you don't need to type this anymore either. Uh, but you might see uh, extern crate uh, in in older code. You uh, you know, you, uh, I think it was about a year and a half or two years ago. You had to type extern crate to bring in uh, external crates. Uh, but now it can figure it out itself. So all you have to do is um, use uh, this use uh, statement, and then you uh, and then you have uh, the external crate ready to use. So um, if we uh, if we're going to do that, then uh, you know if we want to do that ourselves, uh, all we have to do is say uh, use rand. And actually, you can see as you start to type, it's uh, it uh, it'll fill it out and it'll say, hey, you know which rand. Which one do you want to use, and what's what version? So uh, let's see if it has thirty. Yeah, thirty. Um, let's see, Rayon is another one. So um, you can think of these as like the uh, the most approved um, approved because everybody's using them, and um, that's uh, that's 
good because uh, when I uh, when I first started learning Rust, and I think it made sense uh, to do this, but I uh, I avoided uh, external crates as much as possible because I was you know busy with learning the the core language and I didn't want to get into you know other people's code and uh, you know start looking around because if you go into um, you click on docs here and then it'll bring up this uh, you know this. Uh, <clears throat> documentation that we recognize and you know it has all their if you go to all of their items you can see there's a whole bunch of stuff and this for me was all you know all new words that I didn't want to think about I didn't want to think about um, um, you know samples or, or anything like that because I was you know focusing on uh, the standard library uh, but then after you get after you get used to it then of course uh, you will you will start want to uh, using start want to uh, use uh, uh, external crates and uh, the first one I find for me anyways is always a uh, rand because uh, I like to uh, I like role-playing games and uh, you know Dungeons and Dragons and things like that and of course you're going to need uh, random uh, numbers for that so um, we're ready to uh, to do this but uh, I think uh, we might as well start uh, this in the next video we'll put together a uh, a quick uh, quick character